30th. The Ministry of Education has begun consultations on dress and grooming policy in schools. However, Manchester High has revised its rules to allow for school girls to wear hair extensions to classes. Dean of Discipline, uh, Sigrid Miller is on Zoom. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Simone. Thank you for having me. Good yes, morning, Mrs. Debbie Miller. Is also here um, with us this morning. Good morning. I am so curious, Mrs. Miller, of what you make of this whole debate let's start with the overarching issue that is on everybody's lips now with uniforms searching the ground uniforms five feet above the ankle uniforms uh, 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 what do you make of it um dean miller well actually in terms of uniforms touching the ground and all of that at manchester high school we have never been um, in support of that. We want our girls to be comfortable. We ask them to wear their tunics and skirts modestly. That is at least two inches below the base of the knee. But once the skirts or tunics fall below the knee, we are satisfied with that. But we have never been for the very long skirts because we think that our girls will be uncomfortable. And we also believe that it can look unattractive. And may I ask you to weigh in on this notion of actually locking children out of school when they're deemed to have breached school rules, whether boys or girls? Well, actually, we have never done the locking out. We have devised other strategies to address those matters so that on the first infraction, for example, we ask our members of staff or teachers to address that in the form room. And then in the second instance, we ask them to contact parent or guardian and make him or her aware of the infraction. And then in the third instance, if there is no compliance, we usually call the parent or guardian in for a meeting. And so we have a series of steps that we take. It can be that the student can be eventually sent home to address the infraction, but the, the lockout issue is never our option and has never been. Dina, I must ask about the, the behavior of the students, though. Do you find that they are, um, you know, distracted from their studies because of how maybe relaxed some may say um, the, the school rules are considering um, how they are groomed at Manchester? Or do you find that it doesn't bother them at all? Or well, actually, um, over the last five years or so, we have had students who just a very tiny percent, less than 10 percent, who do not comply with the rules. Um, but in recent times, since the, the change has taken place, girls being allowed to wear hair extensions and boys being allowed to wear a low cut that can accommodate a fade. It has not in the past interfered with learning. And so far, since the term has begun, since the school year has begun, there has been no interference either. Right. Mm -hmm. I, find, I find Manchester High um, to be very forward thinking in its approach. Uh, and you have said that this signals a new era in an outlier, or, or, or the new era is an outlier in parent administration relations that could offer a template to other schools. So what you're saying is that um, you are revising the hair extension ban that was once in place, and you looked specifically at the period of, mo of dual modality learning, and you, you obviously learned something there, um, and you said you students would discreetly wear the hair extensions online, um, and so you figured why not allow them to do it in school if it meets certain criteria. Now the hair debate, outside of the uniform debate, the hair debate is the hottest one going on right now. Some schools say no braids, some schools say braids, some mm -hmm. schools say no extensions, most schools say no extensions. You say it's fine. Um, what do you make of the hair debate and why did you think now was the right time to adjust and revise your policy? Okay, I <clears throat> do believe that the hair debate is an essential one. 
And of course, schools have to make their decisions based on their context. Um, because we do not want our students or female students to come in with extravagant hairstyles. We prefer if they come in with modest hairstyles. But of course, we had observed over time that our students, as you said before, were wearing the hair extensions discreetly, neatly, and modestly. And while we were experiencing the dual modality in terms of teaching and learning, we recognized that more of them would come in periodically for face-to-face -face classes with the extensions. <clears throat> and when we asked them to, to remove them, the parents did have a challenge with it. They were cooperative, but they kept asking, why not? You know, it can be worn neatly. It is convenient. It does not, um, the students do not have to spend too much time grooming the hair every morning. And so we listened to them, and that in part informed the decision we made for that kind of allowance. Mm, yeah. Uh, have you been getting any feedback from the other schools, though? Maybe in Manchester as well, um, about this relaxation from Manchester High? Oh, yes, we have. Um, well, one principal called the school to find out what the parameters are in terms of hair extensions for girls because we speak to the length not exceeding the shoulder, except, of course, the original hair length exceeds that. And so um, that principal wanted to know the parameters. But comments have been made on social media and in other professional groups in terms of um, a kind of reluctance, mm -hmm. a kind of fear mm -hmm. that perhaps if we give the students an inch, they may take a mile, and that perhaps it in fact will interfere with learning. So the, the feedback that we have been receiving is varied. I love your response to that. You said we need not be afraid to try. Then we need to decide if there's anything we need to pull back on, but let's try. Let's not be terrified. So... Yes, you give them an inch, you take a mile, but if you see them going down the mile, then yeah. you say, hello, you Pull only up. had an inch. Yeah. So that's a problem. Most definitely. You know, there's an... And in fact, so far, we have not had a problem. School started on September 5th, that's last week, Monday. And so far, the students have continued to be modest. And compliant. Neatly and compliant. Mm -hmm. And we do believe that the parents are very aware, too, that that is necessary. They don't want their... their daughters coming out with extravagant hairstyles that may interfere with the teaching learning process. There's one other issue I want to raise before we go. We're getting the wrap, but I, I, this is something I have never thought of. Um, and Minister Terrellong says this. Persons need to understand that there are some students who suffer from varying types of hair conditions, issues like alopecia, mm -hmm. right? We do have some of our students who are cancer patients, for example, and they lose their hair or whatever the condition where wigs and hair extensions might be allowed. So there are different circumstances outside of just beauty and quafting and ease of, 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 of um, grooming where there are students who need to wear these kind of um, hair offerings. I'm sure, like, I'm sure though, I'm sure though, Dean, like in, in schools where those students are, that those allowances would be made, no? Oh, most definitely. That is how we had begun, where there, there were religious, medical or other special reasons for the request to be made. We would have honored those requests as long as a, a note or a statement would have come in from the experts or from the professionals. But now we are saying and we have observed that whether there's a medical or other issue, the girls can wear their hair neatly and modestly, um, can look good and does not have to interfere with learning at all. So now we, um, we are allowing everybody the privilege of wearing it if they so desire. And so they do not have to necessarily go through that tedious process that they used to have to be able mm -hmm. to in order to get the opportunity to wear the extensions or even wigs because we have included that as well. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's very interesting. Where will rights come responsibilities? Exactly. Mrs. Sigurd Miller looks like she don't play, so she give it an inch. But if you take that mile, it's not, <laughs> it's not a record <laughs> for you. Up. <laughs> and I'm sure we will hear how it goes. Thank you so much for joining us this Thank morning. Thank you so much. Manchester right. High School Dean of Discipline, Sigurd Miller. Thank you so much. Wow. Yeah. Mm. I mean... For us to be saying, wow, in this You're day and age, to, to folks being able to just, you know. Yes. Hmm. I hear the rules are rules. People now saying, that's not. That's not how it's done.
Well, after the break, guys, we hear how one woman managed to drop 246 pounds. We'll be right back.